As promised, I'm gonna do a video about this sump and how you can make one like it if you would be so inclined. So let me first start off with a basic tour of the sump and what my intentions were during the design process. So this will be the first chamber where water will come in out of the aquarium. I intend to run the bean animal overflow system, so these two are here designed to be very quiet. But in the event that some sort of animal should get down here and become trapped, I needed a good way to be able to rescue the animal. And it's as easy as pulling out the filter socks, removing the filter sock table, and then this baffle simply raises up and tips forward and lifts out of the sump. And this gives me full access to this area. And if for some reason I was still having difficulty catching whatever got down in here, these pipes are not glued in so that I can easily remove them. And this should give me complete access to be able to catch anything that has gotten down in here and found himself to be trapped. And of course it goes back together just as easily as it came apart. Moving on over to the next section of the sump. And this is the refugium section. This particular baffle is not necessarily adjustable up and down, but it is completely removable and interchangeable with the second baffle that I've made. I just couldn't make up my mind which baffle I wanted in place. So I went ahead and made one of each so that I can easily switch between the two. But I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna like the one that's already in there better. Also in this chamber is this adjustable door here. So I can easily adjust the height of this door by turning these screws and raising and lowering. This is the maximum water height that could be achieved. So I'm gonna set it at this height for right now. But it could of course also be completely removed in the event that I were looking for a lower water level. Moving on over to the next chamber. The idea behind this area is that it's dedicated to a protein skimmer and it can accommodate pretty tall protein skimmers and still have them inside of the sump, which in some cases may be desirable if you're trying to control evaporation, but may be undesirable in the event that your protein skimmer would overflow and put skimmate back into the aquarium. That being the case, my intention is to have my skimmer completely covered and drill a set of holes to allow me to put small bulkheads to allow for drainage for my protein skimmer. But that's an option that may or may not work for everybody. And of course, this baffle is also adjustable to achieve the exact water height that I'm looking for that would really be helpful when it comes time to tune a protein skimmer. For instance, if I raise it all the way up here, this is about the maximum water height that could be achieved in this chamber. And I just don't think that I'm gonna be looking for that and I can lower it all the way down to here, and this would be pretty close to the minimum water height that can be achieved in the chamber, or I can remove this baffle entirely. And of course, the last chamber is where my return pump is gonna go. I've gone ahead and engraved inch marks so that I would be able to monitor evaporation and make changes if necessary, but I'm probably gonna include some sort of auto top off system so this almost becomes unnecessary. And of course the point was to show the sump off, but the point was also to say that you don't necessarily have to have your own CNC equipment if you wanted to build a sump like this. All you really have to do is to be able to use a piece of software to draw in vector graphic, and you'll need a sign shop that has access to a CNC equipment. CNC routers are great, CNC lasers are even better, and most of the time they simply charge an hourly rate plus the cost of the materials. So that pretty much means all you really have to be able to do is to design the sump that's gonna work and be able to glue it together yourself using the acrylic solvent. I'm not even gonna to attempt to show you how to use acrylic solvent. I'm just not very good at welding acrylic. But there are a ton of videos online that you can find that do a much better job than I would ever be able to do of explaining that process and how it works. Now back to something I said a few minutes ago, you may be asking yourself what exactly vector work is. The simplest explanation that I can give is that there are two basic types of artwork that computers use. The first, of course, is what we oftentimes call a bitmap image. If you take a picture with a digital camera or some sort of scanner, you have a bitmap image. And all that really means is, is that you're looking at a series of dots arranged in order, and the computer simply assigns a color to each dot. Think of your older video games that had eight or even 16-bit graphics. Each pixel represented a square. As video games got better and better and better, the squares became smaller and smaller and smaller. And so the word of the point now, where with 4K TVs, each individual pixel is completely indistinguishable. Vector art is completely different. Vector art, the computer sees a boundary, and the computer is either told that the boundary has a color inside of it or no color inside of it. And what's more important to you building a sump on your own is that boundary itself. In computer speak, we call that boundary a path. So all you're gonna need is some software that's capable of drawing vector paths and to be able to export that vector path to a file that your CNC router user can upload to their computer and cut out. Now in case you're wondering where you get your hands on software to do that, 
In my case, I have some software that came with my CNC router. In addition to that, I also have extra software that I use for other projects as well. Adobe Illustrator is probably the most widely known. Corel Draw is also a good option, but if you're trying to do this on a budget and just don't want to spend the money, there are lots of free programs out there. Inkscape is one that comes to mind. But if the idea of learning to use software and drawing your own sump is just something you're not interested in and you like this sump and want to build this one, I'll include a link where you can download it in the description. I will provide this sump free of charge to anyone who wants to download it, although any size contribution is appreciated. Making these videos is pretty time consuming and every little bit helps. And now on to what I used for backgrounds on my aquarium and believe it or not, the background on this sump as well. This is an automotive vinyl. It's rated for seven years use in outdoor conditions on vehicles. It will last much longer on the back of an aquarium. The beauty of this material is although it's somewhat expensive, the results are pretty much instant and you can use it right away. It's pretty easy to apply. You simply peel it off of the paper backing, make sure you're spraying it with some sort of water and soap solution, and spray what you're gonna be applying it to with the same solution, and then squeegee out all the air bubbles, and you'll have an instant background. And this stuff's available in almost every color you could possibly dream of. And in case you're wondering where to get it, I'll go ahead and tell you that a sign shop is your number one source for this stuff as well. So even if you don't stop by your local favorite sign shop for CNC services, you may find yourself wanting to stop by to get some of this automotive vinyl for use of aquarium backgrounds. Most any sign shop should be willing to sell you however much you need. And in my area, it costs around $7 a square foot on the retail side. They may be willing to cut you a break and sell it to you for less since they're not installing it or having to make any cuts on it. But my advice is be sure you have help when you apply this. I applied it by myself because I've done it a few times. So if you don't have any help, I can wish you the best, but I think your chances are pretty slim you'll get it right the first try. I think that pretty well covers the sump video. If you enjoyed what you saw, be sure to give me a like and a subscribe because I'm gonna be coming out with part two of the aquarium stand build in the not too distant future. And that's where you're gonna see the stand and canopy transform into pieces of aquarium furniture. So until next time, this is Jason with Born Handy.